Waking up on 824 back here inside the BT studio. Canadian Men's Health Week going on right now. So Dr. Yvette Liu joining us once again. Thanks for coming on and thanks for uh, talking about this. Some interesting findings have come out of this week, this survey, especially when you look at the impact on the economy and lost efficiency because of health issues. Yeah, so Canadian Men's Health Week comes about because we want to raise awareness about men's health. And why men's health, everyone's saying? Why just men? Well, this week we want to focus on men's health because we found that Canadian men really aren't that healthy. And in addition, 70% of Canadian men's chronic health conditions can be prevented by adapting healthy lifestyle changes. So let's look at a few numbers. 57, men are 57% more likely to die of diabetes than women. Men are 40% more likely to die of cancer than women. And men are 79% more likely to die of heart disease than women. And this is just a few of the examples of many conditions in which men are less healthy than women. These are not good numbers at all. No. But there, you know, there are key risk factors behind what are causing these results. So let's take a look at the risk factors and you've kind of outlined them up for us of the, the main four culprits. Yes, yeah, so smoking, excess weight, overconsumption of alcohol, and physical inactivity. And the Canadian Men's Health Foundation released a study this week which looked at these four risk factors. And these four risk factors are costing the Canadian economy $36.9 billion each year in direct and indirect health costs. And also there's a human cost, right? Because 45% of women over the age of 65 are widows. So there's a, there's a family cost and community cost to that, not just an economic cost. And was there any indication of how this varies across the country? I mean, we look at our backdrop right now. Throughout the year, we have the opportunity with the weather to get outside, be active. Is BC faring better across the board? It is. If you look at the cost per province, BC actually has a lower cost per province. And you can look at all the numbers on the Canadian Men's Health Foundation website. Yeah, now when we look at the changes, if uh, you know, you're know you watching this at home thinking, okay, what are small lifestyle, lifestyle changes we can make, uh, where do we start? That's the campaign that we're trying to do this week is recommending that men make small lifestyle changes, and women too, of course, but this week we're focusing on the men, and just small things like getting off the bus one stop early, or taking a walk at lunchtime, or taking the stairs instead of the elevator, parking a little further away from your destination if you're walking, and that will force you to walk a little bit further, eating more broccoli, taking the salt shaker off the table. Just little small things that you can do and the little small steps add up to a big difference in health. And you know, a lot of them are common sense reminders. I even think about the idea when I looked at this list too, if you're gonna have a burger, don't order the fries, get the salad and just having greens at every single one of your meals. And you know, we had Joe Cross, Joe the Juicer on this show, who's had a, you know, a phenomenal transformation. And he just said, mate, why take the escalator when you can take the stairs? And it's amazing to see the complacency of people just taking the easy way out when those simple steps can make a big change. It's so true because it's so easy to just go on with your day and have your habits but if you just try to make little small changes over time those changes become new habits and new healthier habits. I always talk to people about setting goals when they want to do lifestyle changes in my office and I tell people to set concrete goals because if you set concrete specific goals you're more likely to achieve them and you want to also set achievable goals. So say you're not doing any exercise at all. It's probably not realistic to say oh I'm going to start an exercise program that lasts seven days a week. I'm going to go out every day because you're not doing any. How are you going to fit in seven sessions? So we talk and we discuss a realistic number of sessions that they can do. Usually maybe it's one to three sessions a week if they haven't been doing any exercise at all. And then I tell people to make the goal as specific as possible. So pick a day, pick a time and set an appointment with yourself. Schedule it in your phone, put it on your computer, put it in your calendar, have a phone alarm if that's what you need. So let's say two times a week on Tuesday and Friday at 6 p.m from 6 to 6.30 and if you can have an exercise buddy then that will help you stay accountable as well and the more specific the goal the better. Well these are great ideas and uh, many more can be found on the website Canadian Men's uh, Health Week.